Have you ever faced a US visa denial? If yes, you're certainly not alone. The disappointment of a visa denial can feel overwhelming, but remember, it's a hurdle many have faced and successfully overcome. Today, we're going to tackle this topic head on, shedding light on the whys and hows of visa denials and more importantly, how to reapply effectively. The world of visa applications can sometimes feel like a labyrinth with its intricate processes and myriad rules. But don't worry, we're here with a flashlight, ready to guide you through. Understanding the reason for your denial is the first step towards a successful reapplication. It's not just about trying again, it's about trying smarter, with a better understanding of what went wrong the first time. So grab a notepad, and let's take this journey together. It's time to turn that no into a yes. So let's dive into the steps to reapply for a US visa after a denial. First and foremost, Understanding the reason for your visa denial is vital. The key to unlocking this mystery lies within your denial letter or the words of the interviewing officer. It's not a riddle from an adventure novel, but a plain legal statement that provides the grounds for your visa denial. Now you might be wondering, how do I decipher this legal jargon? Well, let's break it down. The reason for your denial will likely be found in the different sections of the Immigration and Nationality Act or the INA as it's commonly known. This act is the main body of law governing U.S. immigration policy, and it's where the Department of State gets its guidelines for issuing or denying visas. You see, the INA is divided into various sections, each addressing a different aspect of immigration. For example, Section 212A-4 deals with the public charge ground of inadmissibility, which means the applicant is likely at any time to become a public charge. If your denial letter references this section, it means the interviewing officer determined you might become a financial burden on U.S. taxpayers. On the other hand, Section 214B is one of the most common grounds for visa denial. It deals with the presumption of immigrant intent. The law assumes every visa applicant is an intending immigrant, meaning they plan to stay in the U.S. permanently. To overcome this presumption, applicants must demonstrate strong ties to their home country that would compel them to leave the U.S. at the end of their temporary stay. So. When you receive your denial letter, look for these INA section numbers. They are your key to understanding why your visa application was denied. Remember, knowledge is power. Once you've understood the reason for your denial, you can take the necessary steps to address it in your reapplication. It's like solving a puzzle. Each piece brings you closer to the complete picture. And in this case, the complete picture is a successful visa application. Now that you understand why you were denied, it's time to prepare for reapplication. Preparing for reapplication isn't just about filling out the same forms again. It's about addressing the reasons for your initial denial and presenting a new stronger case for your visa. So what's the first step? Well, it's all about making sure you have addressed the reasons for your visa denial. Whether it was due to missing documents, insufficient evidence of ties to your home country or anything else, you need to make sure you have covered these issues in your reapplication. Now, let's talk about documents. Gathering all the necessary documents for your reapplication can seem daunting, but it's a crucial step. You'll need to provide things like your passport, proof of your ties to your home country, and evidence of your travel plans. Make sure your documents are recent, relevant, and clearly show the information required. Organizing these documents is just as important. A well-organized application will make it easier for the consular officer to review your case. Group related documents together and if possible, provide a brief summary of what each document is and why it's important to your application. But remember, while it's critical to provide enough information, it's equally important to keep your information clear and concise. Consular officers review hundreds of applications, so make sure yours is easy to understand, provide straightforward explanations, and avoid unnecessary details. And one more thing, don't rush the process. Take time to thoroughly review your application before submitting it. Check and double check your information for accuracy. The last thing you want is a trivial mistake leading to another denial. So there you have it. Addressing the reasons for your denial, gathering and organizing your documents and providing clear and concise information are key steps in preparing for reapplication. Remember, thorough preparation is key to a successful reapplication. You've understood the denial reason and prepared your documents. Now it's time to reapply. So, let's start with the basics. The first step to reapply is to fill out the application form. Remember, this is your chance to present your case anew, 
so it's crucial to be both detailed and accurate. Don't skip any sections, and if something isn't clear to you, seek help from a professional or someone who's been through the process before. Once you've filled out the application form, it's time to schedule your interview. This is often done online, and you'll want to choose a date that gives you ample time to prepare. Don't rush this step, because your interview is a pivotal part of the reapplication process. Consider it as your opportunity to personally address any concerns from your previous application and convince the consular officer of your intentions. Next, you'll need to pay the visa application fee. Keep in mind that this fee is non-refundable and is required for each application regardless of the outcome. Make sure you have your payment information ready and confirm the amount you need to pay before proceeding. Now I want to emphasize something incredibly important here. Honesty and consistency. When you're filling out your application and during your interview, it's essential to be truthful and consistent. Remember, any inconsistencies or false statements can lead to a denial, so always provide accurate and consistent information. And don't forget, preparation is key. Go over potential interview questions and prepare your responses. Gather all the necessary documents and double-check them for accuracy. The more prepared you are, the more confident you'll feel during your interview, and confidence can make a world of difference. Finally, keep in mind that patience is part of this process. It may take time to get your appointment and you may have to wait for a decision after your interview. But remember, every step you take brings you closer to your goal. Done correctly, this process can lead you to a successful visa reapplication. After reapplying, the waiting game begins. It's a period filled with anticipation and let's be honest, a fair share of anxiety. The waiting times can vary significantly from a few weeks to several months. It's important to remember that each case is unique and patience is key during this time. While it's easier said than done, try to remain positive throughout this period. The wheels are in motion and all you can do now is wait. Remember you've done everything you can at this point and fretting won't speed up the process. Now let's take a moment to recap the key points we've covered in this video. Firstly, understanding the reason for your visa denial is crucial. It's the foundation upon which your reapplication strategy is built. You need to address the specific reasons for the denial in your new application. Secondly, preparation is everything. Gather all the required documents, make sure they're up to date and ensure that your application form is filled out correctly. Any errors could delay the process, or worse, result in another denial. Thirdly, the reapplication process itself. It's essentially the same as your initial application, but with added attention to the areas that led to the initial denial. And finally we come to the post-reapplication period, the time we're discussing now. It's a time to wait, to be patient, and to keep a positive mindset. Each of these steps is integral to the process of reapplying for a U.S. visa. It's important to approach each one with care, attention, and a positive attitude. Remember, a visa denial is not the end of the road. It's merely a detour, a bump on your journey. It's an opportunity to reassess, to regroup, and to come back stronger. With the right steps, reapplication can lead to success. So, take a deep breath. You've got this. And, as always, good luck.